to me, it's actually very similar outside of just the, the location. Very similar to uh, on-camera acting. If you're giving all of yourself, it's, it is everything. You just don't have to worry about like certain things like what your face is doing, like you can, you can, you can just like you can be as bizarre. Yeah. As long as you get there, it doesn't matter. I'd love to see what we looked like recording oh, this because I'm sure it was like. I looked like crazy. Yeah, I looked crazy. Eyes killer. <laughs> Meet the residents of Element City. Air usually has their head in the clouds. Oh, my new jacket. Earth can be a little seedy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing weird going on here. Uh, just a little pruning. Water is always getting into something. Oh. Oh. Help! And fire? As ordered. We run a little hot. <laughs> this shop is dream of our family. Someday it'll all be yours. But we all live by one simple rule. Elements cannot mix. Uh, uh, <laughs> pipe squished me all out of shape. Dang. <laughs> That's better. Oh. This is a film about many things. It's about opposites attracting. It's also about children living up to the expectations of their parents. How did it start for you? It started with those ideas that you're talking about. A lot of these themes were very personal things that I had experienced growing up and then I would soon discover with the crew. The crew also, we talk to the crew all the time about their different experiences of first generation and second generation. What it means to be a burden, what it means to have the sacrifice, all of those themes went through there. This idea of xenophobia, the ideas of of classism, all of these ideas were just, we talked about a lot. And, and he came to you with the idea, probably, because you're the producer, right? You're the director? Yeah, I mean, I was involved very early on when he pitched the idea, and I was instantly wanted to work on it. I mean, it, it just appealed to me. It had visual and technical challenges that were really intriguing. And then I just loved the, the idea of these characters. Like, only in animation could you make these characters. So you've never left Firetown? Sorry, buddy. Elements don't mix. Whoa. Plus, my dad would boil you alive. Why does anyone get to tell you what you can do in your life? Come on! Why do they even have these? Eh, who knows. Watch this! Whoa! Ember, I see a change in you. Water guy? You live here? It's my mom's place. We got two kids that are swimming around here somewhere. Orca, follow! What? <laughs> I've been trying to fill my father's shoes, but I never once asked what I wanted to do. We have fire falling in love with water. How did you make sure that the animations were just right? That took a while. Um, it was a lot of vulnerable people that were open to try to do something new. Um, the, because, what I mean by that is that there were so many challenges, it was really daunting, it was really scary. Some people thought it was not possible, but there were a lot of open people that thought that it could and th they tied into the emotions of the film and they fought our way through it. It was a real war to get that, those images the way they look. Do you also do the casting? Yes, for, for um, Mamadou and Leah, it was this, a process of trying to find uh, performers that not only had a great way to perform in a human way, but also in an elemental way. Uh, what I mean by that is that just the sound of their voice, like Leah has a smoky voice that uh, sounds like a little bit like fire. Yeah. And, then, and then Mamadou has a voice that's really cool and go with the flow that had a little bit of that bubbly watery feel too. And so it was finding that balance.
how do you audition for a voice? I mean, it's kind of just like anything else, right? I mean, it's we. we I um, guess how you would audition for voice is, you know, you set up your microphone at home in your pajamas and you work really hard for that two or three hours, you send it off and pray to God that you booked it. <laughs> This process was much different though. Yeah. yeah, if anything, Mamadou and I's process for this was pretty similar, but I actually got a call to meet with Pete over Zoom and talk about the character before the audition. Mm -hmm. Because with Pixar, they're very selective and very detailed and careful about mm -hmm. who they cast, so it wasn't just a, pajama record and send off. It was a, it was a much <laughs> yeah, larger yeah, thing yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how about your process? Uh, yeah, I mean, was, I mean, exactly that. We had a, had a chat with Pete. It was great. I just felt very connected to him, very connected to the story, very connected to the character. I was like, oh my God, this is my dream project. Yeah. And fortunately, my girlfriend is a re-recording mixer and she had a studio Ugh, in, her, in her backyard. So and so like my audition, she just like hooked it up for me and I was like, All right, great. So they had a really clear channel and I could just do everything and then I waited and I found out I was cast. <laughs> Who are you? And what are you? <laughs> Go again! You're so hot. Excuse me? No, I mean like you're smoking. No, I didn't mean it like that. Are you done yet? Yes, please. Blow the ball! Not the game! Amber! Oh, I don't want to put you out! I'm okay. I love hot food. <clears throat> <laughs> that pipe squished me all out of shape. Dang. <sighs> That's better. Frank Zombie! Toot toot! Toot toot. Toot toot. <laughs> Peter just told me that he liked your voice because it's smoky mm -hmm. and your voice because it's cool and, and flowing. Does that mean that you amp up the smokiness and the and the coolness and when you're acting or interesting enough yes there are ways to make my voice sound more raspy mm. like kind of like that he was like oh fireplace cinder sounds great do more of that um, and then even with the explosions as well like i actually lost my voice a couple times because we really like took it to the top so mm. even in the end of our sessions i was like we have to do all the yelling and exploding after everything so mm. that i don't lose yeah, my safer, voice yeah. I wanted to like pitch up. I wanted to like kind of match like uh, Wade's bubbly kind of hopeful energy, and uh, Pete really encouraged me to like use more of my natural voice. Obviously, mm -hmm. there are points where you know Wade's all over the place in terms of the spectrum of his voice, but like he really wanted my voice, which I found really uh, encouraging. And and it was like, oh, he really wanted me for this project in a way that I was uh, frankly surprised by. Whoa! How'd you do that? It's the minerals. Check this out. <laughs> awesome! Wow. Watch this! When I met with Pete, he was very vulnerable about what this story meant to him, how long he had been working on it, and what it means for him and his his parents and their relationship, and them having been immigrants and sacrificing what they did for him. And any time there is something that is so raw and real behind a story, it really touches me, like right, right where it's supposed to. And I remember actually even being in my family's house visiting them when I was doing my Zoom, And, you know, my ties to my family and also hearing someone else mirror that experience, whether there was a movie related or not, like I immediately felt so close to him and just Ember, this character who, you know, is also kind of finding herself throughout the film. And I, I'm constantly always finding myself. So that was something that I related to very heavily. And it was just, um, it's Pete's honesty and vulnerability that really helps me get honest and vulnerable and step into this character as well. Yeah, yeah, you definitely want a leader like that, especially for a project that does require a, such an open heart. Um, similar to Leah, I, I, I connected with Pete. I mean, I'm also an immigrant, um, and my parents sacrificed so much for me to be here and also really encouraged me in my dream of being an actor uh, professionally. Mm -hmm. And 
all these things that just kind of like was like, wow, I cannot believe that this movie is being made and this is the perfect time for me to do it and like work with this guy. And also at the end of the day, it just makes you want to call your parents. You know? It Honestly, does. It does. Yeah. I was like, man, I got to call my dad, call my mom. You know, it's just like, it's the best. I love this movie, man. That's so funny because there was a point in my audition too where I had to cry. But because I was in my family house, I couldn't cry. I was just too, it was like too much. And I was like, oh my God, I blew the job. Like I'm, I, didn't, I didn't book this job. Mm -hmm. And then I got the call back later on, but I was like apologizing to him. Like, I'm so sorry for whatever reason, I'm in my family's house right now and it's all too much. And I can't, I, I can't cry. <laughs> like, yeah. it was pretty funny though. Well, then watch it together and then cry. I did watch it with them and they did cry. And I cried too, because they were crying. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Thank you.